Polish the Polish. Want to know what a first draft really looks like? Well, in today's video, I'm sharing tips on how to write your first draft and with a focus on character dialogue and the editing process. Now, I know for myself and for some people who've reached out and asked questions, writing character dialogue is something that can bring people up done because they get caught in the grammatical corrections of writing a book. So in this video, I want to talk about four things. One is around the polished versions that we see. Two is around what to do to actually get your story going. Three is how you can write your character dialogue to get your first draft done. And four is the editing process that actually takes it from first draft to shameless book plug, polished, printed, ready for market copy. Okay, so the first thing to remember when you're writing your first draft is that most books that we see, or actually all books that we see when we are purchasing them online, or especially if they've been backed by a large publishing house and that they have a literary agent, we are seeing the polished version of someone's works. We haven't been privy to the writer's drafting process or editing process. We don't know who their editing team is and we don't know whether what we are holding in our hands is the first, second, third or fourth iteration. Now, four edits is a lot to go through, but I can definitely say from my book, I went through two structural edits, one copy edit and then a proof reading, like a proof reading edit, proof edit at the end. So it actually went through quite a bit of work. Now, it's really important to remember that and that brings me to the second step is to give yourself permission to write that crappy first draft. One, one of my favourite books that I have read which helped me with the writing process is Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert and she talks in there around giving yourself permission to write that crappy first draft which is really important because it can be easy for us to skip right to, through to comparing a finished work with our maybe feeling disjointed dog's breakfast type works that we have in our hands or sitting on our laptop that is our very first attempt. So that's really important. Number two, give yourself permission. So when it comes to getting over that hurdle of how do I write character dialogue, it's important with your story that you look at what's the best way for you to get your story expressed and out for your characters. And for me, it meant that to do that, instead of worrying about the grammatical structure of conversations, I actually wrote screenplay style. What that means is I would have Joe, one character in my book, what Joe would say. Then I would have me and what I would say. So it's as though you were listening to this banter between two characters. Now, if you were to pick up my book and have a look, it reads more in a formatted text where you can see character dialogue and the conversation flows without it being more of a, a screenplay script style of Joe, dialogue, Belle, or me, dialogue, Joe, da 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 da, da. So that's a really important permission part. My book does not have screenplay style dialogue but for characters in there. You can totally write that and if you want to write a screenplay, like you're, you're halfway there. But what happens is that dialogue or that structure from the first draft then went through an editing process. Now, in my experience, I went through two structural edits and then a copy edit and a proofread edit at the very end. So I just want to explain what those are and how it impacts your character dialogue. So a structural edit really looks at the overall arch and framework of the story and the book. You get feedback on the title and whether the title fits the overarching message, um, the chapters and how they transition from one to another and whether they make sense, the style and the genre of the book. So whether it sounds like a memoir, rom-com, self-help, what kind of category is your book going to fit into? Because it needs to find its place and, and sense of belonging. Even if it could fit into, it's around making those decisions on what is the structure of the book. You also get feedback on the characters in the book. So whether they are strong characters, are they sub-characters, do you have too many characters that maybe you need to merge together, which was my experience. I actually um, mashed a couple of people together to make one because it's at the end of the day the experience for the reader as well and you want them to be able to follow on. 
So the, the permission part is really important as you write your first draft and even permission to move timelines or, or situations around so that the story flows really well and the book's message is cohesive. My first structural edit, I had about 25 pages of feedback, which can give your confidence as a creative a bit of a knock, and it delayed me moving into that second draft process by about six months. But the second structural edit that I had back once I had taken on the feedback, really sat down and looked at how I would reformat my chapters and rewrite my story so that it um, was an actual story. The second structural edit, I had two pages of feedback and I actually reached out to my editor and said, where's the rest? Because I thought maybe she just had gone, I've given up, I don't want to work on this. But that was not the case. She'd actually told me I'd done a great job the second time and there are only a few little tweaks to make. So the structural edit looks at your characters. It doesn't actually look at your character dialogue. Now, the next process that the book goes through is what's called a copy edit. And a copy edit looks at the structure of the paragraphs and the like, grammatical um, things and also even spelling. So whether you want to spell a word one way, such as I have, um, have a couple of Australian words in there, so whether you're going to use this type of languaging or whether you're going to use American languaging is really important because it's thinking about the audience and how it's going to resonate. So a copy edit will fix up if you have a screenplay style or method of getting your character dialogue out. That's where it will get fixed up in the copy edit. Now, bear in mind the cost to go through and do this will depend on how your book is written and how much work actually has to be done. And generally editors, if you are using a subcontractor and you're not going through a traditional publishing route, they will charge by the hour and they will give you an estimate based on the number of words in the book and then they'll go on to complete that work for you which is you know absolutely incredible the last part is what's called a proof edit or a proofread where they'll be really paying attention to make sure that there's no spelling mistakes in the book that paragraphs are structured correctly that full stops are in the right spot commas are in the right spot so on and so forth so that's the last part of the editing process so just bear that in mind when you are writing your first draft because there were a lot of changes for me going from my terrible first draft and you'll see like the first page of my book actually looked like this versus the first page looks like this now. So I hope you found that helpful. If you've got a favourite tip around how to get your first draft going or you have other questions, please make sure you drop them in the link below. And if you would like another resource to help you on your writing journey, there is an ultimate checklist to help you take your story from feeling like it's a mess through to a message to the market and to monetize. You can grab that little cheat sheet from my website. It's totally free. So happy writing to you and I look forward to seeing you in next week's video. I'll catch you later. Bye for now.